Genetics is a word that has been thrown around in arm wrestling as if everyone has the same understanding of what it means. But what does it mean exactly? Arm wrestling, like any other sport, is heavily influenced by genetics and it's not always apparent what these genetics refer to. And that's why you can take two guys that are roughly the similar size and structure and one of them is in the argument for top five in the world and the other is arguing in the arm wrestling subreddit. Jokes aside, there are so many factors to this and I want to state beforehand that a big bunch of what I'm about to say is just echoed from a video by Dr. Mike Isretail from Renaissance Spiritization and I'm only going to be covering most of these factors more generally and through the lens of arm wrestling. So for a more in-depth explanation to most of these points, please watch this video, I highly recommend it. The main purpose of this video is to look at some of the factors from an arm wrestling perspective and to give an insight into what that might mean for you. So first off, some of the more general factors that affect strength. Number one, muscle size. Of course, if you have the genetics to build a bigger muscle, then that muscle has the potential to be stronger. I talked about this a lot in my previous video, so go check that one out if you haven't already. Number two, neural output ability. Even if you take two people with the same amount of muscle, the one whose nervous system can activate more of those muscle fibers is going to be stronger just because more contractile tissue is being activated to exert the force. Number three, muscle architecture. Dr. Mike in his video described this as the way the muscle fibers actually point and are arranged in relation to the tendon and depending on how they're aligned it can affect how much force they pull on the tendon and hence the amount of force that is being exerted on the table. Which then brings us to tendon insertion. Yes, point number four. I'm sure a lot of you already know about this one and have probably joked about having your tendons surgically moved higher or lower just to have more strength and you are absolutely right. Just the most minute change in tendon insertion point can be huge. And for a real life example, look no further than someone like Oleg Jacques. Number five, neural plasticity for improvement. This one's pretty simple. It's just how fast your body adapts to increasing the strength and coordination between your muscles. So if you adapt faster, you get stronger faster, plain and simple. Number six, the psychology for training. So this one might be a little bit more abstract. So far we've talked about physical aspects, but I think this factor is just as important, if not more important, especially if you don't have the best genetics and all the other factors covered earlier, hard work can go a long way and most people don't put in enough effort for that to pay off and to realize their true potential. Giannis Amelins took 12 years to become world champion. Now, did he have horrible genetics? No, but he did not have the best physical genetics by far. But through hard work and dedication, he eventually pushed himself to the top. Now on to the factors that I want to go a little bit more in depth in as I think they have specific differences when it comes to arm wrestling as opposed to other types of strength sports. So number one, athletic coordination. This one I think is a big, big factor in arm wrestling, mostly at the starting stages. It refers to being able to coordinate your various muscles to exert force in the proper vectors as you're going through the entire range of motion as well as to adjust the forces as necessary as the situation calls for it. And that's part of what we commonly refer to as table IQ. Now, the reason why I said this is mostly important towards the beginning stages is that I think that this sort of muscular intuition can be taught to some extent and it can be improved on. But even at the high, high levels of the sport, we do see some arm wrestlers naturally being more fluid, more adaptable on the table as compared to others. Number two, this one is not really talked about that much, injury proclivity. So even more so than other strength sports, I think arm wrestling stresses the tendons a ton due to the plyometric, isometric, eccentric forces involved. In addition to that, the bones are also stressed in a very unnatural way in arm wrestling and that's why spiral fractures is a thing in amateur arm wrestlers who do not train in a safe way. But if you've been in arm wrestling for as long as I have, 
I'm sure you've come across guys who, no matter what, don't seem to get injured at all. And no matter how bad their form is or how stupidly intense their training program is, it's genetics that's carrying them through. Being naturally not prone to injury allows for them to keep pushing their body and thus keep milking the gains. But someone else who might be doing the exact same thing but does not have as good genetics to protect themselves from injury might have gotten injured maybe two months into the program and then that sets them back like six months in their training. And number three, lastly, the one that most of us probably think of first when we talk about genetics, the limb ratios. So length of your arm, thickness of your wrist, the size of your hands. There are just so many factors that go into this. So one of the most obvious one, hand and finger size. So this refers to both thickness and length. Having a bigger hand is almost always going to be way better than having a smaller one. So first off, a wider and thicker palm along with a bigger thumb makes it so that your opponent will have a harder time to get their fingers around the back of your hand. And that makes it so much more difficult to get a good cup, which is one of the most important things in arm wrestling. Conversely, longer fingers will also allow you to more easily get around the back of your opponent's hand for the exact same reason. The benefits of the length of your forearm, however, aren't really as apparent, and it really depends on the other strengths of an individual on whether they can utilize the benefits of a longer or shorter forearm. For example, one benefit of having a longer arm is that you can have more reach and you're better able to protect your cup by running your opponent out of pad space. But a benefit of having a shorter forearm is that you can post at a higher angle than your opponent at the setup, allowing for more riser and posting engagement off the go. However, if your personal style does not utilize any of these natural advantages that your limb length gives you, then it's not going to matter that much anyway. Now, the size of your bones and joints also plays a part, but somewhat indirectly. Having bigger and thicker bones and joints, aka having a bigger frame, generally means that there is a greater potential for muscle size. In fact, if you go online and look up those maximum size calculators, a lot of them will ask you to provide your wrist and ankle size as well because there's a fairly good correlation between the size of your bones and the maximum potential size of your muscles. And again, to understand why muscle size is important, watch my previous video on that very topic. So I've talked a lot about genetics in this video. Hopefully you're not discouraged by any of this. And if anything, you should be more encouraged because most of these factors you can't even see visually. So who knows? You might actually have great genetics for arm wrestling. And the only way to find out is to train and compete. And even if you have bad genetics, so what? There's nothing you can do about it anyway. So there's no use in worrying about it. Just have fun, enjoy the sport, do your best. I'm Greg, and I'll see you in the next one.